Greetings, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon those who follow guidance. Now, I'm making this video as a counter response to the five questions that are posed by Brother Sami Zatarawi from Muslim Responses. He raised five questions to evangelical Christians, and just recently, a Christian made a, count, a response to Brother Sami Zatarawi. So, the reason why I'm making this video is a counter response to the Christian position. Now, this is Brother Sami Zatarawi, as you can see in the screen. He will pose his questions, then, the Christian will respond, and I as a Muslim again, on behalf of Brother Sami Zatarawi, will do a counter response to this Christian. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen in. And please be patient because I will be pausing and then doing my response. Question number one Please bring me a single text from the Bible where Jesus ever stated clearly, explicitly, where he ever said, I am God. The first question is, did Jesus ever claim to be God? Right? Now, John 10, 30-33. Jesus said, I and, the, I and the Father are one. And again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. Which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these. They're by the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Alright, you notice the deceptive uh, verse that he quoted? Without the context. And Christians never, ever po uh, pose this verse in context. And I love it when they always say Muslims take things out of context. Yet Christians always quote John 10.30 out of complete context. Because if you read the context of John 10.30, you will see that the verse gives a clear explanation why Jesus was called a God. Now, number one, the Jews were looking for trouble to stone or kill Jesus. So, of course, they tried to character assassinate him by claiming that Jesus himself was claiming to be God. Yet, if you read through to 34 in context in John 10 30, Jesus rebukes the Jews and says, Isn't it written in your book, in your law, that you are gods? And the word for God is Theos, right? The same word which is given to Jesus by the Jews. However, the Christians we are so dishonest in their translations that they give a capital G for Theos, for Jesus. But when Jesus uses the same word Theos as God for the Jews, the Christian missionaries, Trinitarians, give Jesus, uh, the Jews a small g. So you see the deceptiveness even in their translations. They are big liars. They are dishonest in their translations. But you see, Jesus again, he rebukes the Jews by claiming that isn't it written that you are gods. So notice that the word God was given to human beings throughout the Bible. The Jews were called gods. Even in the book of Exodus, verse 7, 1, Moses was called a god. You see, he was called Elohim, which is another name for God. What does this mean? Of course, one could understand that this is a terminology they use to show that these per people were godly people, not God themselves. Again, the criteria that Brother Sami Zatarawi gave was show me the explicit statements where Jesus himself claimed he was God. And you couldn't give that. You just went to John 10.30, gave a complete, took it out of context. And again, they're not Jesus' explicit words where he himself said he is God. He didn't say that. Again, John 10.30, 34 in context refutes you because Jesus rebuked the Jews and called them gods. 
Let's continue. John 14, 8 to 11. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Do you not know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. A very easy response to this. He's now claiming that Jesus is God because Jesus said, Philip, when you see me, you see the Father. So don't look anywhere else. I am the Father. Actually, there's a particular verse that clearly refutes this as the one you can see on your screen. The Father is not on earth, but he's in heaven. So again, how can you claim that the Father is in Jesus and he's on earth, but that verse in front of you says, no, the Father is in heaven and he's not on earth. You see? So what does this mean when Jesus said, Philip, why are you looking around for God? Look at me or look at the Father. I'm him. Look at me. What Jesus meant in this verse was Jesus is representing God on earth. Like a man who represents a company, a salesperson. When a person comes to a salesman and says, I want to see the company, the salesman could say, I am the company. I represent the company. That's it. You see how much it makes sense? So Jesus represented God's work on the earth. So when he said, why are you looking for God? Why are you looking for the signs, the miracles? Look at me because... I do the works of God. You see how much it makes sense when you understand. But when you look at it through the perverted Trinitarian concept and vision, then you can misinterpret the Bible any way, shape or form. You see? And I just want to make a side argument here. Christians look at the Bible through Trinitarian glasses. Okay? When a Christian goes to church... Okay? He doesn't pick up the Bible and say, okay, Jesus is God. No. The church father first tells that poor young boy that Jesus is a God. So now he has the concept in his brain that Jesus is God. So when he opens up the Bible and he sees these verses, you see how messed up he gets. But if the church father never mentioned that Jesus is God then you will never find a Christian pick up the Bible and say, Oh, Jesus is God. You see? So they are conditioned before they are uh, uh, given the Bible. Let's continue. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I is work? Believe me when I say, I, that I am the Father. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. We at least believe the Okay, so basically, I fast forward it a little bit, but basically he was making another claim that Jesus and the Father are one. But we know that there's a very easy response to this. And when Jesus said, me and the Father are one, all this means is that Jesus and, and the Father are one in purpose. In one in purpose. That's all it means. For example, me and brother Sami Zatarawi on that screen that you can see are all so one in purpose to refute Christians. You see? Makes sense. Me and brother Sam, Sam Zatarawi are one. We are one in the same faith. You see how easy and how rational that makes sense. So no, when Jesus said me and the Father are one means one in purpose not one as God. Because if you read and look at that verse in the screen, the disciples of Jesus are also one with Jesus and God. So Mr. Christian, are you claiming now the disciples are also God's because the disciples of Jesus are also one with the Father? No, that doesn't make sense. So let's go to the second question Sami Zatarawi posed. A single verse from the Bible which quotes Jesus stating the following that I am part of a trinity, that God is one in three, that God is three in one, and I make up part of that three. Very simple. Where Jesus explicitly taught the trinity, just like I asked. Okay, question two. Jesus 
Did Jesus ever, from his lips, teach the Trinity? Which words of Jesus taught the Trinity? John 4, 24 to 26. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, now this is Jesus speaking. Then the woman said, I know that when that Messiah called Christ is coming, when he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus declared, I who speak to I who speak to you am he. So the phrase that I want to emphasize there, it says, God is spirit. Okay? Meaning Jesus is saying that God is the Holy Spirit. Okay, there are quick points why this doesn't make sense. Because the Bible itself says the Spirit is created when it's sent. And notice, the Holy Spirit was sent onto this earth. So how can this man now claim that the Holy Spirit is divine God when the Holy Spirit is created according to the Bible? That doesn't make sense. Number two, the Holy Spirit is not the father because when jesus prayed to the father and said that i pray to the father for the father will send the holy spirit onto you that means that the father is sending a separate entity from himself i mean does it make sense that god sends himself that god speaks to himself and to send himself that doesn't make sense so the Holy Spirit is sent by God. So how can the Holy Spirit be God when God initially sends the Holy Spirit? So that doesn't make sense. Point three, the Holy Spirit will not speak from himself as stated in that verse in the screen. So again, if the Holy Spirit is God and he came to guide humanity to the, to the truth, then this Holy Spirit should speak from himself because he's divine God. Yet the Holy Spirit is claiming that he will not speak from himself. So how does that make sense? Is he speaking from another God? Oops. Let's continue. God is Spirit. God is the Holy Spirit. Same thing to me. Um, and then the previous text before, he's saying that I'm, I'm the Father of one. And... Um, you know, I'm in the Father, the Father's in me. Sounds all about the same to me. Okay, question number three. Bring me any text in the Bible. Now, this is excluding the lips of Jesus, the words of Jesus. Bring me any explicit verse from the Bible where the Bible says God is three in one or one in three or three in one. Where it says God is a trinity, three in one. Question number three. God is three in one, except the words of Jesus. Okay. John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Verse 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. In 1 John 5, 7 to 8. Okay. Let me just quickly respond to that. Now, again, the word trinity is not in the bible nor is the teaching because it's been fabricated in 1 john 5 7 right that's been fabricated that verse if you go to the niv version instead of the father the spirit and the holy ghost and the son these three are one this is being changed in the niv bible to the to water and blood so that's been fabricated and then he quoted and said, oh, uh, but um, the, uh, the verse that he quoted about the Holy Spirit, about Jesus being... Oh, sorry, guys, it's going to end. I need to pause it here because uh, I've only got 15 minutes and I'll respond to this when I come back. And when I continue, folks, uh, we will continue to refute the points. So join me in the next video. Well, yeah.